crushing the meta. What's going on everyone? A big welcome to you all to our channel. We are team crushing the meta. And I'm D-Boy. I'm here for you guys with another match on the new Rising Star deck. So in these kind of videos, I will be doing multiple videos. First of all, I will show you the deck very fast. And after that, I will show you a match. Um, so today's uh, video will be against New Nectar, Asha. And the deck that we are doing is still the Giant Star, which plays uh, 4 heal, being the Dudley heal, then 7 draws, 4 Dudley and 3 Linus, and then four, uh, 5 crits, being 4 Lylips and 1 Choker. For the Great One lineup, of course, going with the Cutting Brain as the perfect guard, really, really good. Um, and then three Verdi and three Froggies, two Bomber, one Eliza, and one Tear. For the Great uh, Two lineup, I'm playing the Four Mayhem Tiger with three uh, Brogart, one Axe Diver, one Cheetah, one Mason, and one Lethal. Then playing the four jelly beans and the four rising giant star. Four Igreus, two dirty Picro, one hill or eight, one sea breeze and one Merindol, followed up by uh, the three lioness, the two Gus, and of course one drop and draw and one desmule. So let's go to the replay on the Asha deck. So I start by having um, an okay hand. I wanted to return these two to my deck. So I return the draw trigger and the axe diver to my deck to get at least a grade one because having the jelly beans in my hand means I could get a grade two. Um, from here, I had two yield triggers, one liar lips and the cutting brain to ride. I didn't want to ride yet because I was going first anyway. So I just ended my turn and he didn't have a great one either. So but then I ride into the cutting brain and I could call the liar lips, but I wanted to go and search up my Dudley Mason, add it to my hand. And from there I could attack to his Vanguard or the rear guard. But I wanted to get rid of the critical trigger because the 8k would still be able to attack into my finger. Um, he no guarded, I attacked, and I ended my turn. He ran into his perfect guard, attacking to me. I no guard, have two damage, which is perfect, right into the mason. And from there, I could put more pressure on him by calling the lethal forward. Um, attacking to his vanguard. If these, if this attack will hit, I will still get one more unit to attack with, or I could get a booster. So this is actually the power of Mason, because you really don't want to use your Mega Trainer to get your Frog Raider out. Mason will be able to get your Frog Raider out. Um, this is a very good hand, which I already have the three heals. Uh, that would mean that my Mega Trainer will be the fourth heal. Or a stride folder and jelly beans could be the fourth heal. Depend. You could do both. Um, but yeah, normally you could just use a mega trainer and keep your Verdi in deck. So the thing is with this, when he kills your lethal forward, you'll still be able to go for Liar Lips uh, and make a good column right here. Uh, still get to draw out of it. And with the Rising Star, you get to draw. But what I wanted to talk about is the Mason. So the Mason will get you the Frog Raider. Or that would mean that you don't really have to wait till your Hellheart A turn to get the Frog Raider. And you don't have to waste your Mega Trainer to get your Frog Raider out. Um, and that's actually the power of the Dudley Mason. So from here I attacked. He did the attack through and I attacked again with the Lethal Forward. He took that damage as well. And he killed the Lethal and attacked me twice. Which, that's alright, having that much damage is not that bad. I could ride into the Nova and I could search up my heal trigger uh, by the Mega Trainer or by the Jelly Beans. 
Um, I didn't want to use the skill of giant star, I didn't see a reason to do so. So the mega trader will leave the, the, the field, meaning I have one more deadly heal in my hand. I attacked into his two rare guards uh, because I just wanted to get rid of his resources. Drew the draw trigger with my lion lips, of course. I have to draw the draw, I mean, that, that's just something that I do a lot. So this is this is actually the go-to stride right now for um, for Asha and for actually like the, they could play this card in every Neo Nectar deck. It's a really good skill and does get the names of all the uh, cards in your soul. So perfect. So uh, yeah, he wanted to pressure me this turn. I don't know if this was for him a way to finish the game off. I mean. He knows that I have at least two heals on my hand, and he was going all out, so I was okay with that. I drop the draw, and I draw a draw. Like, this should, could have been the draw, but no, I have to draw it myself. <laughs> um, from here, attack with his vanguard, I, wa I went lioness, so... That's three to pass. Uh, he got a stand trigger, a critical trigger, and a grade two. And he attacked me again for 18, which means that I could G-guard this or G-guard that. But I have to G-guard one of them twice. So I was thinking I could G-guard this twice for two lioness and take or have to perfect guard this one. And that's what I did. So the two lioness would mean that I stop this attack and have GB8, GB7. And from here I could have flipped a Desmiel, but I didn't. Or I did, actually, later on. But I had to flip it the first time. And of course the last one got Cutting Brain, which means that I have already one Cutting Brain in my drop zone, which is perfect for your GB8 turn. Um, Tried using the um, the jelly beans. That was really not smart. I had to try using the birdie and call the jelly beans uh, because the jelly beans will make a stronger column. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't thinking about that. So I attacked first with my fin guard, and he was thinking to take this one and keep his heal trigger in hand to guard anything that uh, could get more power. But yeah, he did actually guard the Vanguard attack. So now he's up to 31, which I thought he had better G Guardians than this to use. But yeah, he went for that. So that's three to pass, he said. Uh, or he said two, I, st I thought it was three. Um, drew into a draw trigger, which is perfect. And from there, I drew into the lethal forward and the cheetah which was really bad because uh, you need both of them in your deck but it's better but from there he he guarded that as well and i could see that he had only one card in hand which could be a heal trigger but i could just go all out um getting the cutting brain just to power up my frog raider even more so the frog raider will restand the cutting brain um, will give the power to the frog raider and he get the power himself from hell or eight going to the soul with one more card from my hand and yeah the combo will just go on and on and on and finish up on the top i have three more uh, attacks to go with using this skill of shooting star uh, putting the getting the eliza the eliza would mean that you could get even one more attack out there uh, the attack could be by the star or the mayhem tiger i wanted to go mayhem tiger but yeah you could go anything and put this skill on the frog raider of course uh because you'll just call the mayhem tiger again and have two more attacks to go i mean if the, if you had the lethal forward uh right here to replace uh to call in front of the eliza or the cheetah that would be perfect because you could use 
Cheetah, Lethal Forward, and the Axe Diver to do some crazy combos. But yeah, you didn't have them. And the Mason was really, really good. So that's why you have the Mason. But that was it for this game. Let's do another one. So we are back with another match. And this time it would be between Overlords and the Rising Star, the deck that I showed you before. Um, so yeah, let's see. This is one of the hardest matchups, some people would say. I would say it's not that hard anymore because now we have the Giant Star, which could always uh, play around your opponent having multiple Denial Griffins because you could always call something with him. Uh, and remember, guys, when you have a unit that is attacking, uh, you could always put the skill of Hellard 8 on the unit that is boosting. So the boosted unit would always go at the end of the battle, or if you activate the skill, to the soul to give you the extra um, call. So even if they retire the attacking unit, if you gave the Hellard 8 skill to one of your boosting unit, the attack will, or the skill will go off and then you would call the giant star, the giant star will call something else and now you have two more attacking units and they could never play for the Nalek Reference. So as you can see I uh, returned the triggers back to the deck and the great one because I had the Frograder to ride and the reason that it's not that it, it's not a big problem if you don't get a great two because your jelly beans could always search your deadly mason or deadly mounty depend on which one you play um, but I got the Brogger which is a better riding target than Mason in this case because I don't really want to get Mason skill off and the Brogger is not that good in the uh, matchup against Overlords because Overlords uh, you can't really go into a strong Dirt Picaro turn because they will um, <laughs> retire your whole Picaro so you would not do that so from here, uh, he ride into his perfect guards um, because he wanted to keep the corner on hand, which is interesting. And I went into the frog raider, attacked him because I already had one more frog raider to work with. I got a heal trigger, which is very nice. So that would mean that I already have one in hand. Uh, he attacked, or he ride into the new 10k and revealed an overlord from his hand. He plays the legend, which is interesting. I think people would now like to play the great because of the ZRs. Um, this is something that is, in my opinion, not that smart to do. He got a stride folder to his hand. This should have been a heal trigger uh, because the heals work great against a lot of the spike combos. Uh, but he got a stride folder, which is, in my opinion, yeah, should have got better than that. Uh, he already has two great threes in hand. He could always uh, call up the Conro, search one more great three out if he wants to. And then he attacks into my finger. Got the heal trigger. And I got the draw trigger, which is nice. I got the second jelly beans. Um, in this case, I had the Brogger and the Axe Diver to work with. Um, in the new combo, you need the Brogger in hand and not the Axe Diver because the Axe Diver will do nothing. Um, so in hand, so yeah, that's why I would ride into the Axe Diver, keep the Brogger in hand in case I need him. I start up one more heal with my starter because you don't really want to leave uh, Mega Trainer on the field because they could always retire it with Gutling Claw. Uh, and when they ride into their grade 3, they could also retire one of your units. So that's why, uh, because of that Destiny skill, uh, you will. Get rid of your uh, Mega Trainer as soon as you can if you get the Counter Blast. And that's also the reason why you don't call another Rare Guard, is that you don't want them to attack into the Rare Guard, and you don't want them to attack uh, into the Fang Guard, because if they attack into the Fang Guard, you get the damage, so you can use your Mega Trainer, but they could always retire the Rare Guard that you just called. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a lose lose situation. So, I attack to get the tier. Uh, the you do need the tier in your deck, this would be very nice because in the Hillard 8 turn you could get him out and that would mean that he could give you more Count Blasts to work with using your Giant Star but you will always... Um, normally you could go into Piccolo between but now looking at my hand I have two heal triggers and two Jelly Beans so I could even search out the four heal triggers if I want to 
but in this case I will search one and stride with one but you could always drop the broker and the tier to stride so we attacked into attack into my finger I no guard this attack and he got no triggers I got a critical trigger right into the star um, and don't use a skill there is no reason to use a skill right here you could get the cheetah out but um, you don't really want to keep uh, a unit on the field to draw from his end phase. Uh, the cheetah, the good thing about cheetah is that you draw from the cheetah and then at the end of your opponent's turn you draw again from uh, having the frog grader or something else on the field. But playing against overlord you will um, keep only one unit on the field to put it at the end of your turn to your soul to draw so there is really no reason to get the cheetah out. So what I did in this case is I stride into the Agrius, of course, uh, search out the heal trigger. And from here I could call up the Frog Raider, uh, then Mayhem Tiger, and something else. This could have also been a tier, but I wanted to keep the tier, the tier in hand. Um, if you look at my soul, I have one Frog Raider in the soul, one Frog Raider in the field. Uh, that would mean that I have only one Frog Raider left in the deck, which is... Uh, really bad because you need at least two frog rays in the deck, especially playing against overlords or Kagero in general or Narukami. So I attacked with this, which it was not charging, of course, um, and then use Agrius skill to draw an extra card and to call the two back. Now charge, of course, the uh, Mayhem Tiger. I got a critical trigger, it's very nice. Put them at four damage, and then the Mayhem Tiger will get the power or the frog raider. In this case, I would rather give it to the Mayhem Tiger. And he wanted to guard that firsthand, but I told him the skill of Tiger. So he was, oh yeah, all right, I forgot about that. And I broke the 10k and he took the damage after all. I draw into a draw, uh, the same as I always do. And of course, the Frog Raider go into the soul and I draw the extra card, so that's nice. Um, from here, I actually misplayed. Um, the misplay that I did was uh, soul blasting the Axe Diver with the Tiger skill. I should have soul blasted the uh, Frog Raider because in my head, I was like, I need the Axe Diver back to the deck, but actually, you need the Frog Raider back to your deck more than the Axe Diver. So now he is using his uh, new GR to give him one more damage. Um, that's the reason why he kept the Overlord in his hand. Um, now the Overlords have the new Son of Bitches, um, as I like to call them, uh, which get extra 2k for each damage that your opponent have. So by having 3 damage, uh, they, all, they already get the extra 6k, um, which is nice. So makes him 15 and makes him 16. Um, attack into my finger. I really did not want to get the double critical right here and lose the game. So went into Lioness for no pass. And of course flip the Desmil. Uh, you could always flip the other one, but I wanted to flip the Desmil. And right here I use it I use the two G Guardians because um, in most cases, if your opponent is smart, he would end up his turn with this attack but he wanted to attack me one more or even two times uh, which was not smart because in this case I could go and use the double G guard because he knows that I have them I've already searched them and that's what I did so I chose to uh, go for the uh, drop and draw and not the other G guardian which could have uh, put some of my units back to my deck and then attack me one more, got a heal trigger which does not work then it's my turn I have one frog raider to work with and I have um, multiple giant stars in my deck to work with so that's very nice uh, called up the jelly beans 
uh, use one of my jelly beans to get the Dudley Mason to my hand. Why? Because the Dudley Mason also has the hit pressure, and that's very nice playing against Kagero. But he can't take damage anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I attack with the uh, Chili Beans, and here he used his G Guardian. That was very stupid of him. He could have guarded this attack normally and then kept his G Guardian for the Mayhem Tiger. But looking at his hand, he will lose the game anyway because he needed at least two more heals to maybe, maybe survive, but I don't think that he would. Um, the Liar Lips goes to the soul, gave me a critical trigger, give all the skills and powers to the Dudley Mason. The Dudley Mason will attack for uh, 41, so that's great. And he tried to stop this attack, but it was, this was not good enough, so he couldn't have stopped it. Um, uh, yeah, so that's when he lost. But let's take a look at this. If he uh, would have stopped this attack, or let's say Denial Griffin this attack, I still could put the Eliza to the soul with one more card from my hand to get the Giant Star out. And the Giant Star will search one more card, and then you have two attacking units. And if he didn't attack and... Uh, if he didn't deny a griffin this mason, then at the end of this battle, the mason and the Eliza will go into the soul. Because, don't forget, the skill of Hellar 8 I put on the Eliza or on the mason. And when they attack, you put the other skill on the other card. So that's why they are so strong. Because it's uh, 16 uh, plus uh, the 20 that you get from them. So it's 16 plus 20, that's 41. Uh, with the extra trigger that I've got So that's why is this combo really really good by having two units to attack with uh, you could always put one of them to the soul the only um, Downside to this if he had two G guardians, which I know he didn't uh, But if he had two G guardians, he could do not agree from this one and he could um, Use the other G guardian to kill the Eliza uh, which kills a great one or less but yeah, that's actually it for this video. So as I said, if he had more Guardians, then the combo will go on, uh, especially by having a giant star in your deck. Uh, the deck will definitely, definitely make some crazy combos. You could also call the Fake Bomber, uh, or of course go for the giant star, uh, call something like um, a Mayhem Tiger, the Mayhem Tiger attack, uh, and then at the end of the battle, the Mayhem Tiger will... Uh, call the frog raider and the frog raider will be able to uh, boost the uh, Charging uh, giant star which already attack for 14 boosted by the frog raider. That's 21 uh, 21 with the skill of hell or eight that'll be 31 so yeah. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, this was or yeah two videos or two matches for you guys to watch uh, and take a look at my playstyle with a new deck if you guys want to see this against like Link Joker, Kai's Breaker, or Messiah, we could do that as well. Uh, I've been testing against Link Joker and Messiah. The core is really, really nice, especially combined with the uh, Axe Diver. But at the same time, um, you don't really, really need him. I could work with uh, one column pretty okay, so I have no problem with that. Um, and usually, when I go to the GB8, I focus on the Mayhem Tigers, so um, I will show you that in another video, how I will play my uh, Hell 8 turn out in the normal case, not against Link Joker or Kagero, or even against Link Joker, but not against Kagero and Narukami, because against Kagero and Narukami you play it differently, because you always want to have an attacking unit, and Link Joker could never uh, lock in the front row, um, only Freeze Ray, but yeah, they don't play Freeze Ray anymore. So yeah, thanks guys for watching again, and until next time.